Man, listen, y'all boy Cat Williams is on a roll today. On a roll and he couldn't be stopped. It sounded like Tupac hit him up. The man came to a knife fight with a bazooka. I'm talking about everybody could get it. From Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley, Kevin Hart, Michael Blackson, Chris Tucker, Tyler Perry, Diddy, Harvey Weinstein. Everybody got it, man. And look, I see people saying like, oh, this was Shannon wanted. Shannon Sharp. He was on Shannon Sharp's club, Shay Shay, for those who don't know. Cat Williams sat down on uh, on the couch across from Shannon Sharp, and he just started unloading, unloading the clip on everybody that most of the comedians who've been on um, Shannon Sharp's platform, right? And so I hear, I'm hearing people say, Shannon, oh, he liked that drama. Shannon, oh, Shannon, you stirred this up. Shannon was trying to, you know, Shannon get messy. He get messy. Some people, I saw a few people saying it. He get messy. Oh, he all into the drama. Now he's all into the mess. No, no, no. Shannon ain't to blame for this. Shannon couldn't even get a word out of the, at the beginning of the interview. Like, I promise you, Cat Williams heard the camera was on and went straight in. Straight in. Shannon couldn't really even properly introduce him. Couldn't get his questions out about his upbringing at the beginning of the, of, at the beginning of the um of the interview. He went in for what? It was damn near three hours, and it's doing so crazy, bro. It's like this. It the, it's one forty in the morning right now. That interview is almost at damn near three million views in one day. That lets me know Shannon Sharp is a media giant, and Cat Williams is just a captivating individual. Love him, hate him, indifferent. He's captivating. And he knows how to get an audience move with things he says. Truthfully, that shit felt like a stand-up. The way it was, I'm talking about funny as hell. Funny as hell. He had, I'm talking about jokes for everybody for the most part, right? And now I'm going to say this because everybody is running with it because they're happy to see Cat back in the limelight. They're happy to see that Cat is, you know, back in the world and, and, and doing interviews and all of that. And everybody like, Cat ain't tell one lie. He ain't tell one lie. He told the truth about everything. He he up there telling nothing but the truth. Now hold 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 the fuck on. Now hold on. Like cat cat he did some embellishing up there too. Now I don't care what nobody say. Cause I for all that he was talking about Cedric the Entertainer. I don't care what he say. Cedric the Entertainer funny as hell. I'm talking about, and I don't care if y'all want to disagree. I don't give a fuck. That live from Nashville uh, stand up he did on Netflix in 2016. Way funnier than Cat Williams' latest stand-up. Probably his latest two stand-ups. Cedric the Entertainer live from Nashville with the Bominicious joke. Look up the Bominicious joke. Cedric the Entertainer funny as fuck. And I'm not just saying that because he's a brother Cap Alpha Psi. He funny as hell. I don't care, right? But he accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing a joke where he's sitting down in a chair and Shannon, I mean, um, Cedric the Entertainer is doing a joke about the spaceship. And I think Cat was doing a joke about the car. He did it on uh, Comic View about two years earlier and then he like yo Cedric was there he saw my joke he gave me props and then I see it on the Kings of Comedy two years later right he did it in 98 uh Cat said he did it in 98 on Comedy View and Cedric had his stand up uh the Kings of Comedy came out in 2000 now I saw the jokes and I promise y'all bro only thing was similar was them sitting down in the car sitting down like they in the car they jokes were completely different. And to me, I'm going to be real with y'all, Cedric's joke was way funnier than Cat's. To me, to be honest with you. And I'm not a comedian, so I don't know about the intricacies of stealing jokes and all of that. Some of y'all can enlighten me, you know what I mean? But yeah, so now nah, I don't care what he's talking about. Cedric's entertainer funny as hell. Now, he did say, and I'm going to say what else he uh, embellished or lied about. Now, I don't know if he was joking or not. He might have been joking. I don't care. He don't run no damn sub 440. He don't run no sub 440. He don't do that, okay? And he damn sure ain't read no 3,000 books a year up until he was 13. Maybe he said, maybe he meant 3,000 books all the way up until he turned 13, not 3,000 a year. Even then, he lying. <laughs> he ain't read no 3,000 books. I'm not saying the brother is intel not intelligent. I'm not saying he's not smart. You ain't read no 3,000 books, dog. Then he talking about he got accepted into college at age seven. I don't care. That's a lie. <laughs> I don't care. You know, no, bro. He did some embellishing up there. A lot of the, a lot of the stuff. I feel like he, he told a lot of truths with a lot of things he said. It was entertaining as hell, and and I feel like I felt them on a lot of other things. But he ain't get accepted into, into college at no seven. I don't care what nobody talking about. If he did, he'd been all in the newspaper, 
all they would have talked about what type of savant he was and our issue would have been everywhere not everywhere but it would have been more talked about than what he would have been known as one of the biggest child prodigies in the land so i don't believe that right but i believe he was really smart and i believe he was able to probably skip grades and all that he has an expansive vocabulary impressive brother for the most part right now i'm gonna say this the way he went at like wait, everybody chris tucker to my christmas christmas talking about why what man call you a nickname like that has a man ever given you a nickname like that trying to insinuate that chris tucker was funny style him and michael jo him and michael jackson was funny style now a lot of y'all love the king of pop mj y'all love michael jackson but y'all championing khaki y'all don't y'all a lot of y'all not mad about it but yeah he's trying to say they was funny style him michael jackson and Chris Tucker, because they were so close and all of that. He said, Christmas, Christmas. <laughs> Imitate that Michael Jackson used to talk, right? And then, look, he going in. He said, you a Faison love, fat lie, right? Now, I ain't mad at him attacking Faison because Faison got something negative to say about every fucking body. He hating on this person over here, that person over there, that person over there for no reason. Motherfuckers ain't even said his name. He ready to just trash him out and act like they ain't shit at nothing they ever did in life. Right. And so I ain't mad at Kat coming at Faison because Faison was coming at him for years. And they, I mean, they had a previous altercation before or whatever and everything. But, um, yeah, Faison clowning country, Wayne, everybody, Faison a hater. So, yeah. Right. Now, Shannon Sharp didn't tell Cat Williams, let Faison love breathe. And then Cat Williams told him, you have an unnatural allegiance to losers. And that's un that's not like you. That's not like you. You have an unnatural allegiance to losers, and that's not like you. You should have said his ass smirking and shit. I was like, oh, no, man. And then he get on talking about Steve Harvey, talking about how Steve got that man unit on his head and made tricked all the men into thinking that he had the sharpest hairline in show business, and he didn't. And I do feel him on this part about Steve, like, basically being disingenuous because Steve Harvey went on um, uh, Shannon Sharp's podcast club, Shay Shay. Let me tell you this. Cat Williams' interview going to be up to like 12 million in a few days. His shit going viral, and it's going to be talked about everywhere tomorrow. It's 1.40 in the morning in Chicago. It's going to be talked about everywhere. But he was like Steve Harvey talking about, I never wanted to be no movie star. Never wanted to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I with, I'm with him on that now. Steve, he's a goddamn lie. Because you tried to uh, get Bernie Mac out of that role in Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12, Ocean's, Ocean's 11 for you to get up in that role. Now, Steve might argue, hey, I wanted to get the role because I needed the money. It's around the time I was going through a divorce. I don't know if those timelines line up where he needed the bread. But either way, he was trying to push Bernie out the way to get your star in the movie role. And I, you can't convince me that Steve didn't want to be a movie star. I don't care what Steve talking about. That was disingenuous, and I agree with him on it, right? Then he started calling out Michael Blackson because Mike got a, he said Mike got a fake African accent. He's a real African with a fake African accent. And yeah, that mother sucker, mother sucker, mother sucker, that's just a caricature of an African person to me. And it's always been like that. Mike don't even talk like that. Mike in Philly, he probably, you know, raising when they probably pick up an accent being raised around your people, but Mike don't even be talking like that. And I, I get it. People have things that are part of their shtick, but Michael Blackson ain't never been funny to me. I'm sorry. That mother sucker, mother sucker, that shit ain't funny to me. The funniest it ever been was in Next Friday. And after you do it so many times, brother, what else you got, dog? It's like the impressionists. They keep doing impressions every time they got to stand up. Hey, bro, that ain't another part. It's not a part of your uh, material. Come on, man. That ain't going to make you funny. So that mother sucker, that shit ain't never landed with me. Okay? Uh, went up there. He called Earthquake illiterate. But then he gave Earth Earthquake his props saying that uh, Quake is funny. Well, Shannon was like, now, nah, Quake... That he funny. He said, no, nah, he is. He is. And he admitted it because Earthquake funny than the four motherfuckers. All right? Right? Now, he killed Ricky Smiley for always being in a dress. And I agree with him on this part, right? The part about Ricky trying to play that old church lady, the old woman, and pigeonholing himself with a certain audience. And I said this. Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry got the same audience. Older black church women love them because they do the routine imitating church folks. Um, You know what? Madea ain't no clean comedy, but Rick, Rich, Ricky can be clean comedy. But yeah, older people love that comedy. That your grandmama, your auntie, them, your great auntie, them love Ricky Smiley and Ricky funny. But them care, them characters he playing, it doesn't really resonate with the younger generation. And he like you picture holding yourself from making it. Then he said Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry only know how to play women. That's what they good at. They know how to be women. That's what they know how. To, I said, God damn. Everybody catching the straight and and cat don't give a fuck. He unloading the clip on everybody. 
He ain't worried about no allegiances, allegiances to nobody. And it's just wild to hear him talking like this, right? Then he say, um, Chris Tucker, he said the Chris Tucker we got now is Epstein Island Tucker, not Smokey. God damn it. Be, hey, hey, be careful for that brother end up suing you for defamation. But Cat Williams don't give a damn about none of this, right? And so I'm like, yo, this is crazy, man. Then he talking about Steve Harvey, talking about uh, what's Marjorie? Oh, everything I got is because of her. My wife got me everything I got. He said, man, you said that about the last wife. And what, your new wife, she thinking like a man too? Like your last wife was? I say, yo, this shit is crazy. But yeah, he is unleashed. And you know, Cat is smart. Now, I believe the next time he do a stand-up show, it's going to be packed, a packed house. Not saying that Cat couldn't do that already, but the reviews about that last comedy stand-up were not good. And people were saying in the last few years, Cat hasn't been that funny as of recently. This shit he did on Shannon Sharp was the funniest shit I have heard in a while. I'm talking about some stage of entertainment, talking about, oh, oh, why ain't no movie star? You're talking about some, he's sitting up there looking like, Cat said he's sitting up there looking like a walrus, moving his arms like this, and you ain't even telling me. <laughs> I say yo, and I'll fuck with Cedric, man, but it's just like, yo, man, talking about he should have, what do you say, popped him in his stomach or something, and I'm like, cat, man, cut it out, you shouldn't threaten nobody with violence after I seen that little boy whoop your ass, that little 12-year-old boy whoop your ass and put you in that position where he had you hemmed up, you can say you was trying to teach him something you want to, cat, you 130 pounds soaking wet, you ain't gonna do no fighting and boxing, you know what I mean, but he's hilarious, man, and and then he said Harvey Weinstein wanted him to give him head. He said, I ain't do no shit like that. But other people got the role. What the fuck did y'all do? And I believe that. So I think it was a lot of truth to what he said, but it was some embellishing. But it was a lot of truth, and it's good to see Cat too.